Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich with an update on the very complex weather situation going into the upcoming weekend. Appropriately enough, I got my uh, Rita's Ice t-shirt on today because uh, unfortunately we're talking about ice and what an interesting system this has been. Right now you're looking at uh, my current surface uh, uh, analysis. We've got basically all the temperatures on here, um, all of the uh, uh, LSRs or storm reports we call it and then the radar and the first thing you notice uh, for us locally uh, blow torching right now we've got southwest winds cranking in the heat a low 70s already and it's only 11 a.m. as I'm recording this uh, the record high today is 78 in Charlotte it's 73 in Asheville and it's 76 in Greenville Spartanburg I think all of those could be threatened especially Greenville Spartanburg and Charlotte um, Asheville the clouds might keep it below 73 but We've got a lot of heating to go. The front is not too far away. In fact, it just moved through the Bristol area, extends down towards Chattanooga, and is now right through Birmingham, Alabama. You can see the south side of Birmingham down here in Shelby County. It's 74, 76 out towards Anniston. Uh, pretty warm at Talladega, but over in Birmingham, it's 59 degrees. And then look at the cold air back to the west. And this has been impressive. You can see the Arctic front down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Look at that line of clouds. That's the leading edge of the much colder air. And look how far south the Arctic air is, all the way down in south Texas. So just mind you, it's 71 currently in Charlotte and down in South Padre Island in Brownsville. It's in the low to mid 40s. So just an amazing storm system. Uh, lots of sleet, freezing rain, and snow. This is a mess. Any time of year in the winter, this would be a huge deal. But in early December, kind of unheard of. And then here's your Arctic air mass. Temperatures between 30 and 40 below, uh, pretty far south. In fact, these temperatures down here in western Canada are currently colder than it is up in the North Pole. Uh, so the cold air has really shifted south in the last uh, couple of days. Now, here's what's going to happen. This whole system is going to slowly move to the east. It's not in a big hurry but we're going to see a backdoor cold front move in uh, from the north. So let me throw some model data up here real quickly to kind of show you what's going on. The first thing we're going to look at is the NAM uh, temperatures. Uh, let me go out here, and this will give you a good idea. Um, let's look at the NAM4 because it's a little higher resolution. Um, again, the blue line is 32 degrees, but the front is essentially where the green line is, just to give you an idea. And we'll go out into the future here and kind of show you. And let me give a second for the model data to load in here. Um, but the, the NAM4 is just coming in. So you can see the cold front is going to be moving in uh, during the overnight hours into tomorrow morning. Now, it probably will not really start to move in until likely during the day tomorrow. So temperatures, uh, the high temperature tomorrow is going to be whatever the temperature is midnight. Look real closely up here towards Richmond. There's the back door front coming south from Virginia. Let's see if I can get this to load. Uh, pretty, this must be the new run that's coming in, so there's a little bit of a lag. And we'll go out into the future. Uh, this is tonight at uh, about 7 p.m. We're going towards uh, 1 a.m. We'll stop it at 1 a.m. here. Um, you can see the Arctic air spilling in from the north and leaking over the mountains as well. So we will have a, a record a low, a, a record high max, which was 64 this morning. We're probably not going to drop below that before midnight. But whatever the temperature is at 12 or 1 a.m., that's the high temperature tomorrow. Because after that, it's all downhill. We wake up at about uh, 7 a.m., Temperatures will already be uh, around 50 degrees in Charlotte, so colder than any point today. And you can see the freezing temperatures are already moving into the mountains, which is kind of interesting um, because that might be a, a brief mix there if there's any precipitation. But things warm up, at least initially, and then the temperature continues to tumble as we go through the day. And we'll go all the way to uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., right before the ACC championship game. Uh, I expect a temperature in the mid-40s with a gusty northeast wind and probably some light rain. Okay, let's look at precipitation. Now, again, this is only through Saturday night, mind you. Uh, I'll throw up, this is the Saturday night precipitation. You can see the leading edge of the front is right there. Now, even though the model's not showing precipitation here, we're going to have upglide, we call it. So likely drizzle and mist. So not a heavy rain, but we are going to see some precipitation probably all across the area. I'll back this up a little bit, and you can see a couple of uh, a couple of frames there of the light rain moving through. So we're not talking an epic rain here, uh, but it's just going to be persistent drizzle and mist. So let's back all this up and let's look at the uh, precipitation type as we go into Sunday. Uh, let me flip to my precipitation type here. Oh, sorry, that was winds. Well, precipitation type. So again, uh, just to recap, green is uh, obviously rain, red is freezing rain, and orange is going to be sleet, and blue is snow. So let's go, uh, we'll go through this afternoon. 
go towards uh, tomorrow. And here we are Sunday morning um, at 12Z, which is 7 a.m. You can see we're starting to get some icing up along the Virginia border down towards the uh, Interstate 40 corridor. As we progress through the morning on Sunday, by 1 p.m., uh, I think this is a really good location of where we're going to see ice. Um, pretty much eastern facing slopes of Avery Ashwatauga County, uh, Caldwell County, Alexander, um, all the way from northern uh, Iredell into parts of Davie County. And um, we'll go through the afternoon. This cold air might be locked in place for a while. And as we go into the evening, it may take until way late in the evening for this to change all back to rain as the warm air kind of wins out. So the typical spots we're worried about here is the eastern facing slopes in Watauga, Ash, Wilkes County, uh, Caldwell, northern Alexander, uh, and northern parts of uh, Iredell County. I really think the mountains will have the worst, the eastern facing slopes, because you're going to have a little bit of lift, which is going to help cool things down. I did want to show you one thing real quickly as far as um, the chances of freezing rain. This is the chances of uh, any freezing rain at all. As we go into Saturday, you notice a little bit in the mountains Sunday uh, morning. We start to see it really pick up um, by 7 a.m. Sunday. Pretty much the mountains, 80% chance we're going to see some ice of some kind. Even down to Charlotte, these are trace amounts, though, mind you, nothing damaging. If we back this up, and I'm going to put a quarter inch of ice is what we consider damaging. Um, this is Sunday morning. You can see the area of most concern by Sunday night is going to be right there, 40 to 50 percent chance of damaging ice in parts of Watauga, Ash, Wilkes County, down to Caldwell County. So those areas right in there would be my biggest concern right now. Quick look at the Boone area. Um, the Boone area is the one area I'm a little worried about. Uh, this is what we call buff kit. This is basically an atmospheric sounding from the ground up. So let me go out into the future here and we'll go to uh, Sunday morning at 5 a.m. The thing you notice is this big warm nose, we call it. This blue line right down the middle, that's the zero degree line. This is the ground, and this is uh, these are uh, thousands of feet, so this is 10,000 feet. Right here between um, the ground and about 2,000 feet, the temperature is going to be below freezing. But above 2,000 feet to 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 feet, it's all above freezing. So this is going to fall as rain and freeze in the surface layer. And if you look, the freezing rain in the Boone area lasts uh, quite some time. Look how strong the warm nose is. If you ever hear that term warm nose, this looks like a nose from the side that sticks out. So we call that a warm nose. And then you go into Sunday afternoon, it's still freezing rain. Uh, this is a little concerning. This is only the NAM model. Let me show you the overview. And again, um, all these red lines are hours of freezing rain, which starts about 1 a.m. Sunday morning in Boone and extends all the way to Sunday evening. If this verifies, you're talking about seven tenths of an inch of ice. So even if you cut that in half, that's damaging ice potential in the Boone area. So right now, my biggest concern is going to be that Boone area um, and Eastern Watauga and Ash County. Those typical areas from Blowing Rock to Boone, um, the Deep Gap, um, these areas, I think we will see a pretty, pretty good ice storm on all these eastern facing slopes you can see right in here extending up um, towards uh, Wilkes County, Jefferson, Roaring Gap, Sparta, up the Low Gap. All to see the eastern face of all these slopes here uh, and, then the, and then the Yadkin Valley will see some pretty good icing as well. So that's what I'm thinking right now. If you live in those areas I'd go ahead and prepare for possible power outages um, but the rest of the area it's going to be a travel issue um, even though it's been really warm Bridges and overpasses could ice up along Interstate 40 North, though I don't think it'll be a huge deal. It's really going to be this area right in here. So again, um, if you live in this area right in here, this is the area I'm worried about, uh, worried about for some damaging ice. Power outage is more than likely in this area. So if you live in there, tell your friends, your neighbors, stock up on wood, water, um, any supplies, please be careful with uh, external heating sources that you're bringing inside. Carbon monoxide and fires are always a big danger. So just prepare yourself. It is going to be kind of uh, um, an icy day on Sunday. The good news is it's only going to be Sunday. Things move out pretty quickly. And then we start getting into some warm air briefly Monday back to the cold air. So a lot going on, kind of a long video today, but I wanted to get into this ice. Of course, I'll complete details on all my social media pages, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, WCNC.com, and of course on TV starting today at 4, 5, and 6. 
on NBC Charlotte. I'll see you then.